Anatomy of the Establum Columns of the Establum The column principle divides the Establum into an anterior and a posterior column, which becomes important when considering Establum fractures and their management. The anterior column is composed of the anterior ilium, the anterior wall and dome of the establum, and the superior pubic ramus. The posterior column extends from the obturator framing through the posterior aspect of the weight-bearing dome of the establum and then obliquely through the greater sciatic notch. The issue of pubic ramus is a complex structure that consists of the inferior pubic ramus, and the inferior ramus of the ischium. It forms the inferior border of the obturator foramen. The pelvis is oriented to form an inverted Y shape. Important vascular anatomy, the obturator artery. The obturator artery is a branch of the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. It arises in the pelvis and it enters the obturator canal. And it divides into two branches, the anterior and the posterior branch, which form a vascular circle around the outer surface of the obturator membrane. An establer branch, which reaches the hip joint, joins the ligamentum teres to supply the head of the femur, usually a small portion of the head of the femur. The corona mortis is a connection between the internal iliac branch the obturator and the external iliac or its branch, the inferior epigastric. It is predominantly a venous connection and the arterial connection is much less. Its location in the superior pubic ramus is variable. It's about 3 to 7 cm from the symphysis pupus. It is located behind and on top of the superior pubic ramus, and one must be careful with lateral dissection of the superior pubic ramus. The corona mortis. It's susceptible to injury in pelvic trauma and pelvic surgery, especially during the ilioinguinal approach. The injury to the corona mortis may lead to significant hemorrhage, which may be difficult to control. Superior gluteal artery. The superior gluteal artery passes through the greater sciatic notch. Injury to the superior gluteal artery can be associated with establer fractures, especially fractures that involve the posterior column. The artery can be damaged by aggressive retraction of the abductor muscles during posterior approach. The medial femoral circumflex. It can be damaged from dislocation of the femoral head or from taking down the quadratus from the femur instead of the ischium. You need to leave a tag of 1 cm for the piriformis and the obturator internus from the greater trochanter to preserve the deep branch of the medial femoral circumflex artery. If you detach these two tendons too close to the trochanter, you could injure the deep branch of the medial femoral circumflex. The medial femoral circumflex is the main blood supply to the femoral head. The sciatic nerve is close to the establum and it can be injured 
In fact, static nerve injury is the most common traumatic and atrogenic nerve injury connected to the acetabulum. This nerve injury can be approximately 10% with hip dislocation. The incidence may be higher with posterior acetabular fractures. When you examine a patient with an acetabular fracture, always check the sciatic nerve function. Check those deflection of the ankle and the toes. It is the perineal division that will be affected. Check for numbness at the top of the foot. Repeat the exam again just before surgery. Partial static nerve injury can get worse from establar surgery. The static nerve anatomy is variable but will describe. There might be variation in its anatomy and here these diagrams shows the incidence of the most common pattern of the relationship between the static nerve and the piriformis muscle. Be aware that the nerve can be split and that can be normal. Keep the knee flexed and the hip extended during posterior approach to the establum. That will protect the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve is posterior to the operator internus and anterior to the piriformis. When using the sciatic nerve retractor in the lesser sciatic notch, the muscle and the tendon of the operator internus protect the nerve. It acts as a buffer layer between the retractor and the nerve because the nerve is posterior to the muscle. The sliding trochanteric osteotomy allows exposure of the dome and the superior aspect of the establum. This type of osteotomy keeps the muscles intact and this will balance its pulling forces. There will be less of a chance of displacement of the greater trochanter this way. The superior gluteal nerve is close to the superior gluteal artery at the greater sciatic notch. The superior gluteal nerve can be injured from approaches that involve more than 5 cm above the acetabulum. Excessive traction or attempt to control the bleeding from the superior gluteal artery at the greater sciatic notch may injure the nerve by a suture or by a vascular clip that may entangle the nerve. Injury to this nerve may affect the gluteus medius and minimus. Injury of this nerve affects the abductors of the hip and the patient may end up with a Trendelenburg gait. The inferior gluteal nerve also may be injured. It innervates the gluteus maximus muscle. The lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh can be injured during an inguinal approach. This nerve usually passes under the ilioinguinal ligament about 2 cm medial to the anterior superior iliac spine. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.